Okay, ladies and gentlemen, we are on mini summit with Coach Sam. This is the final leg of the entire series that started yesterday, Saturday, 10 a.m. I feel so proud that we are here now. You know, what just started like some a flash of an idea, like an idea wave. And here we are. 11th and 12th session. Wow. We started from session one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Now we're on the 11th and the 12th. I have successfully hosted 12 people from my close community as our first ever mini summit. This event is going to be a quarterly event by the grace of God. And I hope to see you again in March 2022, where I'll be hosting another 12 people. We have sent invitations to these 12 people. They have acknowledged and confirmed availability. The flyers will come out when we enter 2022. So, guys, we just started something. You know, just sometimes it looks like let's just take a stroll. And this stroll becomes a journey. And this is how life is. So I feel very humbled by this opportunity and privilege. My two speakers are online already. But before I bring them on, I want to once again thank our sponsor, Rehoboth Center for Elderly Care, for being magnanimous with sponsoring this event and making it worth our while. The sponsors made sure that we were able to give a token to all our speakers, they make sure we were online fully. They make sure that we have been able to enjoy this opportunity to share stories with you. So thank you, Rehoboth Center for Elderly Care. And of course, as you know the culture, Mariah will be speaking in a few minutes shortly when I would ask her to come up to talk about the organization and how you can come in. But I'd like to take a shot first to tell a little bit of my story around the questions that I've asked every speaker so far. Many of you already, many of you, yes, who have followed my work over the years can attest to the fact that I have been consistent with some philosophies. And I would like to share some philosophies that have worked for me. Hopefully that can inspire many others who want to follow or do much more than we can ever do in our lifetime. My number one philosophy, I believe that my number one philosophy is that I love people with all my heart. To the best of my ability, I do everything I can within my power to make things work for people. I do everything I can within my power to support and to make things easy for people. I try my best to do that. And that has been my philosophy in business. In fact, I normally say that my management philosophy is empathy. My management philosophy is empathy, which means that when I come in contact with someone, I try to feel your pulse. And when I feel your pulse, I try to get involved in helping you make things easier for you. So that is one of the ways that I have built my business philosophies and it has paid off. It has paid off. My number two philosophy that has worked for me or belief system is vulnerability. I try my best not to pretend. I don't hide the fact that I have challenges. I don't pretend like I am superhuman. I don't try to form like I know everything. I know nothing they do me. I get everything. I don't believe in that. I believe in being vulnerable, of course, with wisdom, because in the past, I've been vulnerable in the wrong places, and it has come back to haunt me. But you get, I believe in vulnerability as a general principle. I believe that when I show myself like this, I can help more people. So I want to be remembered as somebody that never pretended. I want to be remembered as somebody that never pretended. That is a very strong philosophy for me. I want you to one day look back, hear about me and say, that guy actually said it too. Oh, that guy actually showed it. Oh, that guy actually lived it. I don't want you to hear things and you're like, ah, that guy was showing, he was living the opposite of what I'm hearing, no. Because I, 
we don't have control over what people say about us and what people think about us. But I want what you hear about me to be close to what you know about me, if it's not the same. So I try my best to be vulnerable as much as possible. Number three philosophy that works for me is that I know the power of giving. I know the power of giving. If there's anything that has changed my life is giving. I believe in giving. I believe in giving. I believe in giving. Give time, give knowledge, give resources, give money, give support. Anything you can give, give. I believe in that tremendously. Tremendously. It has been something I inherited from my mom that has worked for me by every means. So I believe in giving. Anything I can give, I will give. Anything I cannot give, I will find a way to make sure whoever has asked or whoever needs it finds a way to get it, even if it's not coming from me. So those are some of the philosophies that have driven my strategies so far. What have been my own challenges? You know, I'm, asked, I'm, I'm answering the questions I've asked my guests, you know. So what have been my own challenges? I think my own challenges so far in, in my journey so far, number one, um, I have faced the challenge of people misunderstanding my, my vulnerability and my empathy, you get? I recall recently somebody was saying that, um, ah, what was that statement? Somebody made a statement recently and had to do with the fact that, uh, it had to do with, you know, the consequence of being vulnerable and showing empathy, you know, the fact that when you're being nice, yes, the person was saying that sometimes you have been, you have been nice and it has been misunderstood because somebody reported me to someone else and said, ah, the way that guy is being nice, I they suspect the guy, will I say something? And I'm like, that's just me, oh. don't misunderstand my niceness, like it's a special portion for you. No, I like to be kind to people. So, that's, that's some of the challenges I face. In trying to be kind, some people misunderstand it and probably misuse it, you know? And then number two is that abuse of access. Some of the, sometimes you're accessible and then people just abuse it, you know? I have contemporaries in this industry whom to reach them is work, oh, a lot of work, you know? But I don't know how to be a big man. I, I, I don't know how that works. So, but that's a challenge, you know? And it has also caused a lot of issues, even in our structure in soccer. So we have a structure that is very formidable. We're very proud of what we have built. But because I have, people have access to me, they go discuss with the team. Then they come back and try to tie my hands so that I can go and force my team to reverse their decisions. Those kind of things are not so cool. In fact, sometimes I recall saying that it seems many Nigerians don't like structure. So many Nigerians admire structure from a distance. They like, it. they like to see that a company is growing, or so we think. But let the, let the structure now do the work. No, they don't, like to, they don't like to submit to structure. They want to see structure from a distance, but they don't want to submit to the structure. So when you hear things like, speak to my assistant, speak to the office, they're like, ah, but you are my friend now, but I can talk to you now. Why should I go and be talking to the office? So people are uncomfortable submitting to structure. That's a challenge that we have faced. Um, and then one of the questions I asked my speakers, what would I do differently if I were to start all over again? What would I do differently? One thing I think I'll do differently is that, um, so there's this belief system I grew up with. My dad used to say, what is this like? Is it not to eat, to sleep, and to wake up? You know, and that was for him a philosophy around don't be too ambitious, don't don't do more than you can, you know, which is a good thing, but it also has limiting belief because the ambition to make as much money as you can, to influence as much people as you can, so that you can influence lives and get people to do more, was not part of his philosophy, you know. So that was a struggle. If I were to do things differently, I will undo that belief system earlier than I did. I did, I undid that belief system late into my marriage. Like I'd gone well ahead in business and life. And I wish that I did that maybe since before university days. So that's one thing I would do differently. I will make sure that I, I make money early. I get in, become influential on time, become visible on time you know, become a voice on time so that I can influence more things than I am currently doing, you know, right now. 
Um, what other things would I have done differently? I would be a bit more disciplined. I've been, I have been reckless, you know, in my early life and a bit indisciplined in a lot of things. I would have been more disciplined with my appetite for many things so that I would have become more, less dramatic, you know, less scandalous and less errors, basically. Because one of the things I've learned is that so many errors we make in our exuberance come back to haunt us in future. So I think that I will have been a bit more disciplined in my younger age than I am, than I was, you know, if I were to start all over again, that's one thing I would do differently. Uh, so, so that's basically it. You know, I just thought I should share my own perspectives, having hosted 10 different speakers that have shared on this same point. So now let me go invite my speakers. But before I do so, I want to once again appreciate our sponsor, Rehoboth Center for Elderly Care. Thank you, Josephine Ziba, for clapping for, for that my note. I thought I should just do that. It wasn't planned, but I'm happy that I did. So thanks to our sponsor. Um, in the course of the session tonight, our sponsor is going to speak to us. They've been very, very generous with their resources, and we're happy to have hosted this event. My speakers tonight are very two powerful people. And when I say powerful, I mean it by every sense of the word. Everybody knows Stella. Everybody that knows Sam Obafemi or knows Sokka knows Stella. And Stella unarguably is one of the most powerful people in our industry. Because like I normally tell Stella, if they are doing a ranking of people that understand our industry, the operations of it, Stella will be in the top three. And I can say this anywhere. At the, at the national level, when we're doing, when we're doing, okay, yeah, great. So when we're doing, um, you know, when we, when we want to do a ranking of people that understand behavioral change work in terms of operations, Stella has to be in the top three because she's, she has seen it all. In these five years of doing soccer work, the things we have seen is not small. And of course, my co-facilitator tonight is also the king of the north, Othman Abdul Rashid, you know, and he's coming with a lot of experiences, you know, that we're going to be sharing so I'm going to have both of them speak with me concurrently as I trade off questions back and forth because I would like to maximize the time. Um, Othman is currently at a resort and he's waiting to finish this session with us before he starts heading back into Abuja town. So we're going to be maximizing the time and make sure that we, we also do the justice to this subject matter. So King of the North. Othman Abdul Rashid. Yes, boss. Good, Good to have boss. you online. Hi, sir. Super excited to be here. All right. Hello, Mr. Othman. Me, I don't know why they join me and you. I don't understand. <laughs> I, he's so long. We'll take it offline. We'll take it offline. I don't understand this, but no problem. <laughs> <laughs> How are you? Hi, thank you. Okay, <laughs> ladies and gentlemen, we have two very powerful people, very important people. If you have followed my work in the last close to two years, you will know that Othman has been at every turn at our beck and call, supporting our work and delivering A value, A class value, top notch value every single time. So guys, I have two very powerful people with me here tonight, and we're going to have these conversations concurrently. Hopefully in the next 30 minutes or 45 minutes, we are done so that Osman can set out on his trip back to Abuja and we can say fantastic event for the weekend consummated. So I'm going to start with Osman. Let us meet you. Who is Osman? What does he do? What does he represent? Thank you very much for this opportunity. My name is Osman Abdul Rashid. Um, I'm a business leadership consultant, coach, speaker, trainer, and author. Uh, basically, I help business owners grow their business with clarity. Uh, and, and honestly, I've been in coaching for a, a while, I think three, four years now. But I didn't start as a business coach. So what I started was just like life coaching. But I realized that the impact I wanted to leave in the world, the impact I wanted to leave in Nigeria, wasn't just about helping people change their lives and behave better. I realized that... Um, a country is not re re remind, remembered for the policies they create, 
but a country is remembered for the businesses they're able to grow, right? And so I said, you know what? As my own way of, of adding value to the African continent and uh, my own way of adding value to Nigeria, I decided to switch into, coach, into business coaching. And honestly, the, the reason, another reason why was because I've always loved business. I think I've been, I think my first ever business was maybe when I was like 10 years old, nine, 10, you know. Uh, so yeah, I've always loved business and I like to help business owners. So basically that's what I do. Fantastic. I'm, a, I'm, I'm, I'm okay. Yeah, that's, no, that's basically. You can drop that. You can drop that. Why not? <laughs> All right. So I was going to say, I love, I love, um, I love working out. I love running because I believe that our physical ability translates into other things. The way you do one thing, the way you do every other thing. Uh, I'm married. Uh, I have kids, two kids, a twins, a boy and a girl. Uh, and I'm super, super very intentional about how we raise the next generation as well. So I hear here and there once in a while, I drop some, you know, fatherhood post here and there. So yeah, basically that's me in a nutshell. Awesome. That's the king of the north. Thank you so much, Osman Abdurashi. Let's go to Stelion Sopka. So Stella, who is Stella? Yes, what sir. does she do? What does she represent? Talk to us. Good evening, everyone. Good evening, boss. My name is Stella Omochi. I am I'm still trying to I'm still trying to settle into that position. I am the current CEO of Sopka. I um, popularly known as the fixer. <laughs> I like to fix everything and help everyone fix everything. I am big on volunteering. Um, I'm currently a life coach, a certified life coach. I am an EQ and an EQ and anger management coach. I, I am a trainer, I am a teacher, and I am a friend. Interesting. Life coach. EQ, anger management, fixer. That fixer part is one of the very interesting parts because over the last six years and counting that Stella has worked with Sopka, I've seen people who have tried to poach her and tell her, come and work for me. How much is this person even paying you? Let me double, let me triple it. This one, that one. And when they can't poach her, they now say, okay, come and help me coach my staff. Come and help me talk to my PA. Come and help me train. Come and help me teach these people. So they, they constantly sap and sap from you. I had to, at a point, tell Stella, you have to start charging money for this, you know. It can't just be using you like that. So maybe at some point, Otman will also get involved in trying to train her how to make money from this thing, you know. But, but those, are, those are the great things, basically. I'm going to continue with Stella, then come to Otman. In this journey of leading the organization, and in this case, even before you joined Sopka, I've seen, I've met two of your bosses, your former bosses before you worked with me, and they have given me the same feedback that I have had. Stella's former bosses told me, if I one of them, Aisha, wait till that's her name, Aisha. Uh, Aisha Mohammed. Mohammed. Aisha Lee, yes. Uh -huh. she, she, I met her and she said, oh, coach, so you're the one that took Stella from me. I said, no, she had left before she came to me. She had left you. Uh -huh. And she said that she still wants to take Stella back because Stella is dedicated to the business. Stella can sleep in the business, Stella can do this, can do that. So when I heard those feedback from two different bosses that had hired Stella, it gave me comfort that I was not the person Stella was doing this for. That is just who Stella is. And it gave me a lot of comfort because Stella is diligent. But I want to ask Stella, all these years of supporting business owners and leading other people's organizations as if it's your own, what does it give you? What do you feel? Like, what is the motivation for that kind of character? What's the driving um, I'd like. I'd like it. I like, I'd like to take it back. Uh, my father used to be very big on helping people. He used to be really big on anything that is laid in his hands. He'll make sure it succeeds, mm -hmm. whether you pay him or not. He would go all out. So I think that's where I picked it from. So it became like a way of life for me. That's what I saw growing up. Mm -hmm. So every time there's something that needs to be done, I always like to volunteer and I do it with the whole of my heart. So I think it spans from where I come from, how my upbringing was, 
how my father used to carry everybody's matter on his head. Oh, you need to do this, let's do it. And then of course, mom Situ was always supporting him. Oh yes, okay, this is what you want to do. Then when he now tries to overdo it, she's going, oh, she's, she was usually his checkmates, you're overdoing this. And I also have a checkmate in my family for me. <laughs> My younger sister is in my checkmate. Ingo, you are doing this too much. Take it <laughs> easy on this. So I think it was it was something that I inherited, and I'm glad I did from my father. Wow, wow, fantastic, King of the North. Yes, boss. Why do you do what you do? What's your motivation? Hmm. What's your driving force? So to me, I think is <clears throat> I believe in the human capacity. Mm. Right. And a lot of people are living far below their capacity. Mm. So I believe that sometimes we don't, sometimes people get permission to be, do, and have the things that they're meant to do just by watching us living life to the fullest. True. So I have, I've seen a lot of times where people tell me, oh, you post too much, you post, especially my family members. See, if not that they've given me cap on what I can post. Mm. And, and, and as there's a cap on what I can post, people still think I post a lot. I don't. There are a lot of things and, and you know, I, I can't talk about, you know, family things, my kids and all that and all that. There's always, there's always a barrier. There's always a checkmate. But I believe that if you live your life to the fullest mm. and you share how fully you are living your life, right? Mm. Apart from the people that, you know, those ones, they are, they are own case is different. Maybe they will hate on you and all that. But there are people that will say, if this guy can do it, and this guy don't get too head now, mm. I should be able to do it. Mm. And the honest truth is that if there's anybody that can live like that, then I'm a prime candidate. Why? Because I, I, it's not like I was born with a silver spoon. Mm. It's not like I have any special privilege. It's not like I have any special talent. I'm as regular and as random as they come. Right. But alhamdulillah, I've been able to make a life for myself that I can, you know, even I can be proud of in a way. And I, and, and, you know, so if I'm, if I'm living that life and I'm, and I'm doing the things I want to do, right. I believe that people will begin to see that thing. Yeah. I've yeah. had my bosses. So when I left oil and gas last year, my bosses were calling me, were like, come off my wait. How, how you take Duam mm. that they've been in the game before me. This thing that I'm doing is what they want to do. But they are not even able to take that chance. And I say, hey, listen, I'm taking the chance for you. So that when yeah. you see me succeed, you say, you know what? This guy, you yeah. know him now. There's nothing, yeah. nothing gone the guy. Yeah. So me too, I can do it, right? Mm -hmm. And so that's why I'm also very passionate about helping business owners because a lot of business owners come into business with this gooey-eyed idea that, oh, all I need to do is just put the product out there Everything marama, money will start flowing. You know, <laughs> but that everything is not marama. Can you take cash or squanda? You know, it doesn't work that way. So, because I, I suffer that same thing too, honestly, for time, I'll tell you. There was a time, and, and I'll digress a bit. There was a time that I spent 250,000 naira wow. to get a haul, to get food, to get everything so that people will come. And then I'll try to upsell them my course. Wow. Nobody bought anything. Nobody. Wow. Not one person. I almost died. Wow. Guess what? Like a year later, the same venue. This is around I looked for a smaller venue. I spent only 16,000 naira. 16K because I counted it. <laughs> they gave me a discount for the hall. I bought drinks. The biscuit I gave them said was crackers. I said, bring saucer. Let's put the crackers on the tin. I'm not spending money. And I walked away with at least 250K that people paid me that day. Wow. Wow. So that growth from that guy that was spending money to get customers to who I am now, where I'm actually literally turning coaching clients away. Wow. Wow. Is two things. One, I understood who my ideal customer was. Mm. Two, I niched down aggressively on it. Mm. That's one of the issues that business owners 
mm. face. And so that's why I do what I do to help business owners identify who their ideal customers are, niche down on it, create channels, understand how to meet, meet out to them. So that's what I do. What I do. King of the North. Fantastic. Wow. I'm sure these things wouldn't have come without challenges, you know? Ah. And before I continue, I want to charge everybody on this call. Please invite someone to join this call. We have at least one, around 30 minutes left to go. And I can tell you the things you will hear from Othman and Stella is revolutionary because like I told you earlier, Stella is the backbone of the business we have built in the last five years. Othman has done massive numbers. So if not for anything, somebody should remember that you invited them for this remaining 30 minutes of talk. So the, the link is in the chat room. Just copy it, share it on your status on WhatsApp, put it on your Facebook. Let's get this room filled up for this last leg of the segment. This is what I want you to do and please do it now. So Othman, what would you call your top three challenges on this journey? that you've embarked on since, since before now, this journey throughout, what would you call your top three challenges? So my first challenge is not believing in myself. Mm. And that sounds crazy because I'm one of the most confident person you, met, you meet. Mm. Mm. But I found a way to always sabotage myself. Sabotage myself. And it always came up around Maybe when I'm trying to price my services. So I'll price it in a stupidly. I mean, there was a day you actually told me that, see, look, come. This guy, you can't be pricing like this. Because as you're associating with me, as you're pricing like this, people will start to think that me too. <laughs> I said, okay, boss, don't worry. We're, we're moving to the permanent side slowly. But what I realized was I was always undercutting myself. Like, I didn't believe. I always felt like a fluke. I still do. I'm just waiting for the day that my, they will catch me and then they will realize that there's nothing. But the funny thing is that the more I, I, I interact with people, the more I teach, the more I coach, and people are seeing results, they're like, oh, well, this guy, you know, you're good and all that, right? So that's, that's the first thing. The second challenge that, I, that I, I have faced and I still face is lack of discipline. Mm. Yes, I know. You think this guy you have discipline, you run every day. Yes, I do all that. But the honest truth is that it's only me that knows my capacity. I know what I can do. And I can tell you that, honestly, there are weeks, not days. Mm. There are weeks to go by that I will not do any productive work. Wow. wow. I kid you not. And not that once in a while, though, not that I'm in a funk. That's my default mode. My default mode is chill. <laughs> Then one day I'll just wake up and then just put small effort. Then things will happen. Then I'll go back to my. So if I were more dead, if I were more disciplined and I stopped procrastinating, honestly, I know the amazing things I'll do. Wow. Right. So that's, <laughs> and it's all about me limiting myself. Right. And I think the last one is um, one of the challenges I've had is I've not been able to get people to work with. Mm. And it has nothing to do with them. Mm. It has a lot to do with me. I'm not the best. I'm, I'm not a very patient person. Mm. Mm. I cut people off easily. Mm. Uh, so I've had quite a number of people. I've even had conversations with you where yeah. I asked you, okay, how did you start? You yeah. know, some people volunteered. I, that you asked me that, okay, I should look at all the people that are hailing me, that want to work with me. I should try to bring them close. So I bring you close, then I give you something to do, and then you don't do it. I'll just cut you off. <laughs> That's right. I'll just cut you off, and I'll move on. Time right? for and because <laughs> I don't have time, so you get it. like there's no time. Let's move, move. So, but I, I honestly realize that for the next level that I want to go to, I need to put systems in place. Wow. I need to bring people together to wow. work with me. So I'm, I'm totally consciously good. working towards seeing how best I can, I can do that. And I think for the people service, two things. Is two. Honestly, it's true. I don't. I don't want to pay people plenty money. <laughs> <laughs> That's the honest truth. Yeah. So I, I try to see how. Um, uh, what I do is not just design. So instead of me to get a dedicated graphics, they'll say you look. Just give me templates. Give me ten templates. How much will I pay you? 
When you give me 10 tables, me, I'll be putting it myself. But honestly, I need to start working on it. <laughs> so those three things are my biggest challenges, honestly. You need Stella in your life. <laughs> for that though, I need Stella. <laughs> but Stella is for me, for me. Honestly, Stella, I don't know. She doesn't answer me. I'll send a message. Just leave me on red. Oh. <laughs> Maybe when we jam, when we jam, when we jam, when we jam later this month, we discuss when you can't run anywhere, when we are in the same vicinity, we won't be down. <laughs> now, let's go to Stella. So, Stella, what would you say are your top three challenges working? Because, so one thing about Stella that I, that I need to say here is before Stella accepted to be a CEO was a lot of work. A lot of work because Stella's natural area is being a backbone. There's somebody in front, she's doing, so she's the doer, she's a fixer. You know, just tell her what you want. Once there's a gap, Stella steps in. Once there's a, a flaw, a lapse, Stella steps in. But because she understands the culture of the business we have built from day one, she was the best candidate to be the CEO of that business. It was going to be counterproductive to bring somebody to be her ogre. Outside. It would just kill him because the, to relearn that curve. So switching her from being a COO to CEO was a lot of work. And gratefully enough, the business spent money, exposed her to trainings, got her to travel, you know, got her to interact with other CEOs, which is still in a coaching program. Like next, this week we're entering, she's back to Lagos for another level of cohort. So that was a transitional move that, that did the magic. It just changed everything. So, but, but then I want Stella to share with us what her top three challenges have been on this journey. Hmm. Um, okay, boss. The first I would say is um, getting people to believe what I believe. Hmm. I had a lot of um, backlash. I had a lot of people say, what are you doing with that man? What are you even doing? What do you even, okay, where, where is your office? I'll say, our office is at Mabushi. But what are you guys doing? What do you do? Does he even pay you? I had my friends send me job openings, send me interview dates, do every other thing, submit my CV and just ask me to go for an interview. I'm like, I have a job. What's going on with you guys? So that's, Acceptance from other people. My mother has been from the from day one has been my biggest supporter. She has been my biggest fan. She's one person that keeps saying, "You can do it. You guys are doing great." Every time you call my mother for a for an event, free or paid, she will show up. She always shows up. She has been my biggest supporter. With her, I can go the mile. And then another thing was transiting from the PA to chief of staff, to COO, then CEO. It was, everything is happening so fast. And I'm wondering, okay, could Sam, can you just hold on a little? I, I need to get hold of what is going on. What, how can I just, I'm just CEO, COO yesterday. And so the last time I checked my employment letter, it was really, it read COO. And that was 2019. And in 2021, I am already CEO. I said, could Sam, hold on, I'm not ready for this. So. I think, as Otman said, believing in myself, believing I can do it. Because some would say, Stella, you can do it. Just go. And then he locks up. He doesn't, he doesn't involve himself anymore. And that time I know that, oh, this man has just given up. Let me just do what I have to do. Do what I have to do and not embarrass myself. So that's, again, and then clients. You know, I was speaking with a client last week. And then she, she goes, oh, could some, could some would always say, go to Stella. And I say, yes. Because... Because Sam does not have some information. He, and she, she was really surprised. You mean Coach Sam doesn't? I say, honestly, sometimes I try to give Coach Sam, an, Coach Sam an information. He goes, oh, Stella, I don't need this. I need to do other things. This is not, this is your jurisdiction. So deal with it. So when she goes, oh, you really mean Coach? She was really perplexed that Coach Sam does not have some information. I say, yes. He actually doesn't concern himself with a lot of things. So dealing with customers from different backgrounds, from different um, um, worldviews, it was it's, it's still it's still something I am I'm helping my team um, cope with. Because some people, you face value, if you judge them by face value, you think that, oh, they're going to give you everything you ask. They have, they've agreed to a particular amount. And then when it comes to payment, you have an issue with them. So 
when I have to judge a customer by face value, sometimes my sentiments get in my gets in the way. I'd be like, oh no, 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 don't worry. This person is going to pay. So those kind of things have, have been and are still challenges, even in the course of the journey. But I know that we're coping, we'll get there. We keep re strategizing, come up with a strategy, keep re strategizing. Ha, ah, but transitioning is not is, has been the biggest challenge. Being on this course of this challenge. <laughs> Fantastic, fantastic, fantastic. I'm loving this conversation because I think that both of you have the same nature of growth. And those on this call, especially those that will be watching this on YouTube much later, would find value in this evolution. As you are evolving, it's giving hope to some people that, oh, I can actually evolve. I love the way this conversation is going. Let me come back to Othman. Othman. In terms of what you do, I think that sometimes some business owners are overwhelmed with ideas and the execution part becomes a challenge. You being a coach, a professional, how would you advise or what would you instruct a business owner on this call or somebody who thinks that they are full of ideas, they don't know what to do? How can someone move from abstract ideas to tangible outcomes in a short three to five steps, what would you say? So <clears throat> ideas, right? And uh, ideas are a dime it doesn't. Everybody has ideas, even people that they have ideas. <laughs> so having ideas is not the thing. Mm. Executing on those ideas are the things that are necessary. Mm. And I think I want to come from it from not steps, mm. so to speak, on what to do, because different ideas have different execution pathways, right? Mm -hmm. The path to cash will be different. But it's more or less, I want to come to it from the mindset. How, what kind of mindset that you should have? Mm -hmm. And that kind of mindset comes from three laws that are universal, mm -hmm. right? And, and they really come, you know, it's, it's about um, um, the ideas. The first law is the law of attraction, right? A lot of people misunderstand what the law of attraction, what the law of attraction is. They think that all they have to do is to think positive thoughts and then they will attract the things that they need. But you see, it, it, has, it has nothing to do with that. Yes, that's part of it. But you need to believe, you need to, you need to, your body vibration needs to carry that belief. And then your body becomes like a magnet and then, you know, it, 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 those things and situations start to come. But that's not the, that's not the final. That's, that's just the first step. The next step, right, is now the law of intuitive action. And the law of intuitive action is where a lot of people fail. Mm. What does the law of intuitive action say? It says that for every idea that you have, mm. you must take action on it. Yes. Take action. You have an idea, take action. And the smallest action you can take is to write it down. That's the smallest action. If you can't write it down, then just, just like you said, Coach Sam, you had this idea of this mini summit. What happened? You went to work. Pa, 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 pa. There are some people that would have had the idea for mini summit, but till now they've not done it. They will tell you that they want to do it in January or they want to do it in February or in March. Mm. You understand? Mm. Execution is the name of the game. There's no time to waste. Mm. Here's, and, and for anybody listening that you might have an idea and you are reluctant to move let me tell you something when we pray so we pray god bless me with lx570 you know i must always talk about that <laughs> <laughs> black with red interiors and all that <laughs> lx570 will not fall from heaven <laughs> what will happen is that god will bless me with ideas that will bring lx570 now sometimes someone's destiny is tied to you manifesting your idea Mm. For mm. example, Stella's destiny to be CEO was tied to you, could some big, big building subcar. Yes. But if you had the idea to build subcar and you refuse to work on that idea, if yeah. Stella decides to go for night vigil <laughs> and says her enemy should die by fire, that fire is coming on your head. <laughs> because you were the one that had the that had the, the vision to bring oh, the idea goodness. that she needed to come to life. Wow, wow. So if you are doubting yourself about That's bringing deep. your ideas to life, That's deep. understand That's deep. that there's somebody that is sitting down outside praying, 
praying and waiting for you to bring your idea to life so that they can fulfill their own purpose and yes. you are stopping them. Mm. Mm. What mm. tends to happen mm. is that when you do that kind of thing, right, God will replace you. Sorry. Will bring someone else that will take on that idea. That's why we see people say, ah, that guy stole my idea. No, he did not steal your idea. You refuse to work on it and then God gives someone else the idea to work on. Sorry. So the law of intuitive action says that once you have an idea, start to work on it immediately. Oh, wow. Wow. But here's the thing. Wow. A lot of people say, okay, I'm going to work on it. Because Chuckman said, I'm going to work on it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> the mistake they make is that they don't understand that there's another law that is waiting for you. <laughs> right? And that law, right, is the law of diminishing intent. Mm. And the law of diminishing intent says that the longer you wait before you act on an idea, the less likely it is that you will act on that idea. So now you are listening and you are saying fire. And you are saying, I'm going to take action. And then you now say, no, I'll wait. Let me wait. Uh, Monday, I have uh, I have meeting, monthly meeting on Monday. I'll wait till Tuesday to take action. Fa, 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 you will not take action. <laughs> right? So you must start to take action on your ideas immediately. A lot of people ask me, Othman, how are you able to do to do the things you do. It's not anything. I don't have any talent. It's that I don't think. Thinking gives me headache. I don't mm -hmm. think. I feel like going on a run. I wake up wearing my shoes and I'm out. Mm. You know, mm. recently, uh, I, 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 for weeks, I was taking my kids out when I'm going for runs on Sundays. And my neighbor says, oh, please, can you take my son the next time? And I'm like, there's no next time. You think I sit down and I plan it? No, I just wake up and if they're awake, I'm like, guys, Wear your shoe. Let's go. So wow. that particular day, I planned it. I said, okay, you know what? I'll call these, you know, in the morning we woke up. Luckily, my kids woke up at seven that morning. So, you know, I, I called the mom. The mom didn't pick. That's the, my neighbor. And we went. By the time we came back, you know, she saw my message later. She was like, oh, they were all sleeping. I said, so easy. You can't do what you want. <laughs> so there's no, there's, there's no all those things. So you need to understand that the law of attraction, so you need to put yourself in the same vibrational frequency of the, th of the things you want to, to, to succeed, the things you want to see, Yeah. right? Yeah. Put yourself in that yeah. position, put yourself in that situation so that you start to take the same vibrational frequency. Yes. Once you take the, that vibrational frequency, the law of intuitive action, as you have an idea, start to act mm -hmm. on it immediately. Straight up, straight up. And as you're doing that, you need to understand that the law of diminishing intent works. Even me that I'm teaching you, sometimes it works on me. Yeah. I'll say I want to do something. I will now not come and do it. And then somebody else will come and do what I wanted to do. Do you get? Wow. So the, wow. I think these are the three things that people Thank should you. have in their mind. Thank you. Not really yeah. more about steps, but just yeah. have that mindset. Yeah. Thank you so much, Othman. I like the way you have put it. And I see from the chat room that people are getting straight up value from this thing you're saying. One thing I would like to add to what Othman has said, because I also noticed that many people, <clears throat> because they are gifted in generating fantastic ideas, they want to, now he's saying the law of, you know, taking action, and then you are taking many action on many ideas, and then you are stuck. So maybe one of the things you should consider for 2022, stick to one idea. Stick one. One. Not one. Do it, do it, flog it, flog it, flog it, let the horse die, 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 anyone. Let people even know you with that one first. When you are able to do that sufficiently well, you will now have so much confidence to spread your wings. So I needed to add that as an icing to what Othman has said. Let me come to Stella. Stella, for the last years, even before we founded Sopka, you have worked with so many people that have come our way. Don't, some are still with us, some have left, some have gone to school, some have gone to other vocations that we have sponsored. We have sponsored several people that have gone through our system. And many of them keep saying something. They have said, working with you has taught them this. Many working with you has taught them that. But I'm wondering, what has working with them taught you? So all the team that we have raised over the years, working with the kind of teams that we work, both full staff, contractual, remote, distant, 
How has this worked for you and what has it taught you? Um, I would say, firstly, because of the people I have worked with and because of the way they look up to me, it's, it's, it's very scary when I hear people say, oh, because Bostella did not do it, that's why I didn't do it. Or because Bostella does not think I should do it. And I'm wondering, okay, there are a lot of people that look up to me. I shouldn't just be reckless. I shouldn't just do things the way I want to do them. So I have learned that um, as I evolve, as I grow, as I have people work with me, I should increase my threshold of acceptance. I should increase my threshold of learning. I have to keep learning. I can't stop learning. I have to continue to give them value. Because if I don't, if, if I don't have what to give them, they would actually move on. Mm. So that's one. I have learned that I have learned that because I have them going in and out, I have to learn what each person does. So mm. right now in the organization, I know what each person does, I know how to do what they do in case they are not available to do those things. So I am able to fit in and quickly, so I don't get frustrated, mm. so I don't get stuck. So that's part I know that I have learned. If I wasn't a CEO or, or there were one CEO somewhere, I would have actually just been doing what's on my JD. At least I knew that when I was the PA, I was doing just what was on my JD. <laughs> so I'll be again, just move. So, so I have learned to grow. I have to keep growing. I can't stop growing because of the people I have working with me. Wow. Wow. Fantastic. Othman, let me come to you. Yes, boss. What are the mistakes you think you've made on this journey? Mm. It would be weird if I say I, I don't think I've made any. I mean, I've done some things that didn't make sense. But when I call it a mistake, I think it's all about learning, mm. right? Mm. I think so. I think one of the mistakes, okay, yeah, let me see. One of the mistakes I made was that I was selling things without having an offer. See, that offer, if you have an offer, I used to, I didn't know what an offer was. I used to think that offer is, eh, I'm doing this thing, come and buy. No, that, that's just you stating what you're selling. An offer is when you have, and honestly, that book, uh, 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 How to Sell to Nigerians, was what? Um, I think his network. No, I think he received, he probably received a call. Let's give him a second. He'll be back. He's back now, I think. Okay, the network has thrown him out. So let me take that question to Stella. Stella, mistakes. Yes. Tell us about the mistakes you think you've made in this journey so far. Um, I'd say um, getting to be mentored on time. Mm. Okay. So, Sorry, I'm back. Okay. So should I continue? Or so, uh, Stella, no, continue. no, go ahead, go ahead, go ahead. Stella, continue. Otman will be back. Okay. So getting to be mentored on time. So getting myself to the point where I realize that I need a mentor. I need to be responsible or answerable to someone. I need someone to check me. Hmm. Because I, we did not, I think the idea of having your children have this uncle or aunt that they look up to, hmm. that they, they cannot fail because auntie so, so be angry. Yeah. I think it's, very good. I didn't grow up in that system. I only grew up knowing that I cannot fail because I don't want to fail my father. My father didn't fail, so I can't fail. So I learned, I only learned from my father and mm. I did not learn mentorship. Until later, when I got into the coaching system, I realized that, oh, I actually need someone to mentor me. Mm. I need to know what systems look like. 
Mm. So it's not about having a boss and then you close, you go home. Because, of course, in all the industries I've worked in, hospitality, banking, um, security, and the likes of them, I never really looked up to someone aside work. So mm. anything that has to do with work, okay, yes, you're the boss. But aside that, I move on. So people knew little or nothing about me. Mm. Then systems. When I started a business, I started the business helping women in Abuja get domestic staff. So I get them trained, I get them to the to their um, bosses, I monitor them. But I realized that because there was no proper structure around it, it actually I was I was worn out. So I burnt out. Women were frustrating me. The cleaner, the staff were frustrating me. The junior, the um, domestic staff were frustrating me. So I had to shut down. Wow. So I that was one mistake I made. I didn't wow. learn structure. Wow. I didn't learn system. So I used that to do better with soccer. And this was before I joined Sopka. And even when I joined Sopka in the early, early years, when I joined, I just joined Sopka. So I learned that structure and system was very, very important for, is very important for every business to thrive. And then I think that's, that's the two for now. Fantastic. Very, very pragmatic mistakes shared there. Um, for anyone that wants to run a business, I think that this, this goes a long way to help you understand that you need to have a reference, <clears throat> we call it law of referencing, which is the mentoring she talked about. There has to be somebody that seems to have a cardinal direction that you can emulate. It may not be verbatim copying their journey, but the thing is that when you see somebody that is making progress in the direction that you can resonate with, there are principles and vibes that would project that you can catch that become your stimulating factors. So these are very, very key. That's why some of you, when I talk of Mrs. Ajala, when I talk of Dr. Bala Mohammed, when I talk of Dr. Gidon, sometimes it looks like I'm worshiping these people. It's not worship. It's just the fact that there is a way they do their thing that I have connected with, that is driving me. You get it? When my father died, he actually destabilized me. Mm. I felt like there was no, I was not accountable to anyone anymore. So mm. my mom was, my mom is a friend, but my father was the man I was looking up to. So when he died, it was like, I had lost everything. There's nobody to be accountable to. Let me just fly. Wow. 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 That's very principal there. That's very principal there, man. Very deep. Thank you so much, Stella, for sharing that very vulnerable point. Um, Othman, let's continue with your mistakes. Yeah, okay. So... I said, um, when I first started, one of the mistakes I was having was I didn't have offers, right? Mm -hmm. And I always, you know, I was always just trying to sell, trying to sell the next best thing. Uh, and until I sat down and I realized, I said, wait, listen, look, you need to stack these offers in a way. And honestly, since I started doing that, eh, it's, been, it's, it's, it's been great. I think another mistake I made was when I first started, I was trying to do what seemed, what it seemed like everyone else was doing. Mm. Uh, I didn't do what was true to me. Mm. Um, so I, I started Business Leaders Club. And what I was doing was I noticed that most people that host membership sites just used to go and record and upload. <laughs> I struggled with that thing for months. It was killing me. Mm. And I'm not that kind of person. I'm a people person. I get my energy off people. Sometimes I can jump on a call and I don't know what I want to teach. But when I interact with the people, suddenly... It comes, the fire comes. So until I made that switch to now saying that, okay, you know what? My business leaders club will be calls. Yeah. Then I can upload the calls. Anybody that misses it can go and watch the replay. Yes. It became powerful. Mm. Then when I now started working on the community, mm. right? Ah, no, that one just killed me. I <laughs> Guess what? And I learned this one from you. <laughs> All I did was I got a couple of books together. Printed mugs, business leaders club mugs. The people that were on a particular call, I scream on it. I say, okay, all of you guys get souvenirs from me. And I send them the book, the mugs, and and the whole community has been going crazy since then. <laughs> Coach, they are the best. Are, I'm like, ah, come on, that's true. So I, I think I saw Dr. Ngozi was asking, uh, what do I mean by stacking offers? So here's what I mean. For example, now, um, 
so I have, I have, so I have Bizak, my business acceleration challenge that, that, that I was doing. How I stuck the offer was I said, Bizak is 50,000, is, is, um, is how much? Yeah, 20K, 20K, right? I said, um, boss, which is my business operations and strategy section is 50,000, right? And then I said, you get one month coaching for 150, right? So 150, 50K, 20K, that's, that's 220. Yes. Then I now said, you get BLC subscription, which was 5K, 5K. Then you get how to sell to Nigerians, which was 5K. That's 200 and something. Yes. I now said, for only five people, I will give it to you at 50,000 naira. What? Papesi, yes. <laughs> I know. <laughs> so I was testing it. I wanted to see if they will, if they will buy the offer, which was what I did. That time I spent 16,000 naira that I told you. I got 10 business people into a room, spent 16K, gave them that offer, and I said only five people. There and then, five people paid me. It was <laughs> mad. I was like, are you kidding me? So I said, okay, great. So that means this offer stacking thing works. So, and, and guess what? So the idea, you might think that is more work, but it's not. It's not. If they join Biza, the whether they join Biza or not, it's, it's the, the same, same work. Thing, right? <laughs> exactly. So the only extra work will be the boss session, which mm. is what they are paying for anyways, in principle, the 50,000. Mm. The coaching sessions after that is a gateway because I guarantee you, if you work with me one month, you can't go anywhere now. So next month, you now say, boss, how we go do? I'll say, hey, <laughs> can we take cash for squander? <laughs> we take <table. laughs> <laughs> we thank go, let's go there. That's all. You understand? So it was a temporary sacrifice for a oh my future goodness. possibility. <laughs> you understand? So I that's what you. I mean by stacking offers. So stack your offers like that. Put up a lot. See, give people something that they can't believe it. They uh -uh. They you pay 20k buy. for disrupting marketing class. And you get book what 50k. <laughs> and, uh, wait, you get food. Tell us to kill you with food. By the way, if you guys have not signed up for the November disruptive oh. strategy marketing clinic, you have not, I don't even know. Better leave this call and go and sign up because you have sold out. Come and join sold out gang. You're not here. Later, when we put sold out, you say it's a lie. Okay. Oh. Follow. Who the end. <laughs> Follow. <who knows? laughs> Wow, I love these conversations. I love these conversations. See, here, guys, the thing about these things we're saying is that we're sharing what we are doing, not what we have done, not what we hope to do. These are things that we have replicated severally at different levels. And if you have followed, you know that Osman has been in every opportunity that we have, both his BSG, Disruptive Marketing. He is one of our in house partners. We're, we're, we're in for life. So we're sharing these things. It's funny, yeah? It's funny that we crack jokes, but these are real issues and we need you to take advantage of that. By the way, Osman just talked about the disruptive clinic. We actually have a deadline of after which nobody would be admitted anymore, which we're going to announce a bit later because even the facility where we're going have given us a deadline when we must make full payments for everybody that is coming. So it means that if you are interested in joining, if you are still floundering whether to come, whether not to come, maybe you should just consider that you are not coming because we will sell out, like you said, and you will not be the one saying, but Coach Sam, now you did not tell us. But that's going to be for later. I have only one question left to ask both of you. But before I ask that question, I'm going to bring our sponsor to come and talk about Rehoboth Center for Elderly Care. Madam Morayo Ebo, please come online now and let's talk about your generosity as a sponsor for the mini summit, November, 2021. Where's Madam Morayo? Please bring up your video so that we can talk about our center for elderly care. Um... Hello. Okay. You're here. Good to see you, boss. Can you hear me?
Hello, Madam Morayo. Can you hear me? Okay, I think her network may have. Hello, Madam Morayo. Can you hear me? Okay. Yes. Okay, okay. I thought your network had thrown you out. So, can you go on? Can you speak? Thank you very much to the speakers. Uh, I think Stella and a lot. Can you hear me, please? Um, it was breaking. Yes, I can hear you, Maria. Okay. Yes, Maria, I can hear you. Yes. All right. Okay. Thank you. Thank you for that confirmation. Uh, so, Rehoboth Center for Elderly Care. What we do. do is to support this. Um, we also support them with medical how routine. Okay, we have various um, services at different levels that uh, the elderly um, can benefit. Bit from elderly people for us, you know. <laughs> <laughs> but you, you, know, you will not do the taekwondo style, you know. <laughs> All right, so we have training services. In we have town hall uh, sections. Can you hear me, please? Yes, loud and clear. Oh, thank you. Very, very so, so if anyone wants that we give to them okay again um we also have opportunities for for organizations you know if you know that, uh, you will know that as we age, you know, so many things changes with us, okay? Organizations should take opportunities like this to train the staffs on, on how to make wise choices when it comes to their food, when it comes to health, uh, medical checks, and the rest of the things, okay? Then you and I are the next generation. How do you want to stay healthy so that, oh, I think my internet is. Hello, madam. Okay, I think I can take it up from here just to save the time. I am currently scrolling through the website of RCET, which is Rehobot Center for Elderly Care. And if you can just take a few minutes to follow with me, you will see the different sections on the website. But there are two areas I want to particularly show you. This first one talking about enlisting parents or the elderly. And it talks about in case you want this organization to help you follow up your elderly ones, you know, phone calls, messages, especially broadcasts on WhatsApp, visitation, taking drug supplies to them, um, sending them medical professionals like op optometrists or, or dentists or physiotherapists or, you know, food nutritionists, ETC. You can fill this form and enroll your elderly ones and even tick the areas you want them to be catered for. You can pick the options that are available for you 
and that would be taken care of by the organization absolutely free of charge. You are not paying anything by enrolling your elderly ones. However, okay, my power has stopped, but let me just continue. However, if you also want to um, be a donor, let's assume that you want to contribute you know, to the project by being a financial donor, then you want to click on the donation link. Let me quickly find that the donation link, which is here. Um, so here you're able to, okay, this is for volunteer. If you want to volunteer, you will click on the become a volunteer and you can also select the category you want to be a volunteer, maybe a follow-up member, maybe a professional, which is the medical team, a financial contributor, which is those that want to send money. And then we also have the donation. The donation, like I talked about, is where you are able to say, oh, I want to give money. This will automatically open the pay stack link where you are able to contribute via your card. And you have the option on the donor, let me go back, the, on the donor page, you actually have the option of donating offline and online. Let me quickly find where that is. There's a, page, there's a place where you can donate online and offline. So the offline means that you'll be given a bank detail where you can now send an electronic transfer to that account. But the online simply means you come here and fill the pay stack link and send your donation. It's completely voluntary, completely voluntary, but we highly, highly recommend and support this initiative. So this is coming to you on behalf of Rehoboth Center for Elderly Care, our sponsors on this mini summit 2021. Like I've said since yesterday and like our sponsor has said, you may not have the money to contribute, but you have an elderly person in your family that you care for. So the minimum you can do is to share this information so that someone through you may actually become a financial supporter or a volunteer. And somehow it may just turn around to you saving someone in your family just by being a part of this initiative. So once again, we want to thank our sponsor. Um, is your network better now, Madam Morayo? You want to wrap yes, up? Yes, please. Thank okay. you very much. You can just say a word to finish that. Oh, I, I joined you when you were almost rounding up, and I think you have really done justice to that. Thank you very much. Thank you. Much. So enlist yes, your elderly ones. Enlist, tell someone. Thank you. Please, ladies and gentlemen, let us help us appreciate Madam Morayo and the Rehoboth team mm -hmm. in the chat room. Please send your love. This is the best time to do so because this is our final session. We are closing in the next 10 minutes. Please share your love in the chat room. Let them know we appreciate this gesture and this massive opportunity to share and contribute to humanity. Thank you so much, Rehoboth Center for Elderly Care and Madam Morayo Ebo, thank you very much. So ladies and gentlemen, let us proceed with the rounding part of our conversations tonight with Othman Abdul Rashid, the King of the North, and Stella Onwache, CEO Sopka. My last questions to both of you, and I'll start with Othman. Excluding Coach Sam, who are the three people that have influenced you <laughs> who are the three people that have influenced your journey they have influenced what you have become or what you are becoming please tell us oh three people yes okay so i think i i think i said apart from you so yes <laughs> that, that one we had okay but one person was my former boss, right? My CEO of NU Retail, Yomi Abokun. Mm. And how he was able to influence me is that he always thought big. Mm. Like just, you know, NU started as zero and we were able to grow with branding and all that. So all my branding ideas come from my work with him and, and you know, how he has been able to influence me. 
He does things top notch, no middle ground, like you know, well packaged and all that, right? So I think that that's that's one person that has influenced me. Uh, I think another person that has influenced me is Steve Harris. So Steve Harris um, really showed me that it doesn't matter, right, mm -hmm. where you're coming from, but you can always live up and, and live the dream that, that you want. And I think the last person, and in no way the least, of the person that has influenced me is my mom. Mm. Uh, so my mom raises the bar all the time. Just when I think I'm... Um, she just raise it and say, oh, guy, you have not even started. <laughs> uh, so I, I learned... Honestly, so something happened recently, and I don't know if, if you were aware of this, but... So Nonye had a training in Kaduna, and, you know, she wanted to talk to me to, to go for the training, and I couldn't go. So I told her that I would send somebody for her. Right, and it was my mom, but she didn't know it was my mom. I just thought that I have a trainer that I'll send to you, and trust me, the trainer will do justice. Oh my god! And she said she told me about it, but but you didn't even know that it was my mom. So I, I, you know, I told my mom, you know, mom, you know, you are a trainer now, you are HR. Please let me just do this training. I know wow. that she went and killed it, right? And Noye came back in this the, the, um, disruptive marketing class on October. She was telling me, ah, man, that trainer you sent to me, I don't even know how you're able to get her. She was amazing uh, and she's high level. She engaged in it. I said, Oh, no, you don't know, it's my mom. She was like, What? Wow. She was like, No wonder. Ah, ah. Actually, she told so, me about this, but so I didn't, I didn't know. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. 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 She told me, she told me. <laughs> so, like, seeing, seeing her, you know, transition, seeing all the things that she's been doing, you know, it's, it really showed me that, look, there, there's no limit to the things that you can do, right? And she really, really has supported me, has helped me to, even when I doubt myself, sometimes, you know, she, she's like the ginger that I need. So, yeah, I think that those, wow. these three people have really wow. helped me on wow. my journey wow. that I've been. Wow. That's massive. Stella, let's wrap up now. Who are your influencers? Those that have influenced you, and of course, please, excluding me, Okay, thank you so much, boss. I cannot exclude you. That's why I want to thank you first to tell you that I cannot exclude you. That's no problem. On this journey, I cannot exclude you, Coach Sam. Coach Sam, my late father, my mother, and myself. Honestly, I owe so much to you, Coach Sam. You have shown me that you believe because mom says, Oh, I just think that ah, you're being sentimental. Which yes. one is that you can do it? You can do it. You're just showing that because you are mommy, so that's that, that's what you're built for. But honestly, coming out and seeing that, yes, I can actually do it. Thank you, Coach Sam. Thank you, mommy. Thank you to the blessed soul of my father who yeah. has who, who laid the path for me. Fantastic. Wow. It's been such a journey since yesterday. Ladies and gentlemen, I wish that you guys had questions to ask Othman and Stella because we need to have Othman traveling back into town. So is it possible that you have one or two questions you want to ask them quickly before they move? Because at this point, I am done asking all the questions. I am so humbled by all that has happened this weekend. If you have not received the links to the replay, we have been posting it in the chat room. We will still post the replay for this particular session, which is sessions 11 and 12. And then everybody can have the full package of the replays, absolutely free, absolutely free. Our facilitators have the liberty to put commercial value on their session. So somebody like Osman, for instance, can the way he normally does it, to repackage this entire video of his session, put it out there as a visa content or, you know, BLC content. Only the facilitators have rights to put commercial value on their sessions. Every other person, no go area, just enjoy it and share it with everyone. We promise to do this by the grace of God, March 2022. And we already have invited the speakers. They have acknowledged and accepted. In due course, the poster will be out. But before we go, I want to remind you, Subka Futurist, 
is the next big thing. For every one of you who has the need to have a staff that has sense, we in head correct. We want to help you package them, train them, groom them, grill them, expose them, six months intensive program, and then unleash them to the, to the industry via employer. So in case you have an employee that you want or you have somebody in mind, send them to us. If you don't have anybody in mind, share the flyers and the news about super, super futurists. When people register and we train them, you can now come and hire them just based on terms and conditions. November 26th to 28th is our residential disruptive marketing strategy clinic. We invite you to come and end the year on a fun note. We're having barbecue, end of year party, great conversations, great networking. So please, we, we, we expect you to register. The deadline is, um, today is 7th, the deadline and the deadline, they gave us two weeks deadline to the event. So 26 minus 14 is um, 12. So it means that we have barely one week left. So it means that you have only one week to register for the Disruptive Marketing Strategy Clinic. Otherwise, you may not be able to attend. Um, I see two questions in the chat room. And um, Josephine, Soccer Futurist is not- Yeah, so I think Ralph asked the question. Yes, Ralph had asked you a question. Please answer that, my brother. Mm -hmm. Ralph is saying that what is your okay. next big step? What's your b hug? <clears throat> so I had a thought recently and the thought just dropped in my head. Uh, to, and I was thinking about like a business school mm. and honestly, it just entered my head and I was like, you know what? I want to launch a business leadership academy Correct. where we train business owners on how to grow their business, how to become better leaders and all that. Uh, so I think that's the next big thing that I want to work on. Um, so business leadership academy. I think also I realized that there's a, uh, this weekend or last week alone, Four people called me to ask me for if I had contact with salespeople. Mm. I think that there's a scarcity of good salespeople in the market. Yes. And I think that since, you know, I've always been a salesperson, I think it's something I also want to embark on to see how I can do some sort of like a sales training for people. And then, you know, um, um, yeah. But I think it will also still just be under the Business Leadership Academy. But I think how we have, how we have Lagos Business School. Yeah. I think we deserve something like that or not. We do. We do. We do. I agree. Is that Othman's network? Yes, I think so, sir. I agree with Othman. And it's a conversation we're going to take to the next level. How to make sure we have a robust world-class business school facility in the north that's very true so um josephine to answer your question soccer futurist is a physical program holding in abuja mm -hmm. the reason is because the strength of the program is actually the hands-on training we're going to be it's an internship you know it's an internship People will be studying my team, attending our strategy meetings, attending our events, being trained by me and my, 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 my contemporaries in the industry. There's a lot of exposure that will be happening. These things can happen virtually. So many people have been asking to pay for the virtual training. We, we said it's not a training. Yes, there's a training part, but the strength of the program is not the training. The strength of the program is the hands-on interaction and experiences. Those sit with me and my team, plan with us, see how we do things, our books, our numbers, our strategy, our marketing, our customer service, our operations, our distribution of products, our planning for events. These are hands-on things. So we wish we could do it virtually, but we really it would diminish the quality of the plan we have because we're doing this. We are giving everything we have built into this. We want people to have internal visibility into everything we do. Let them see that this thing is not rocket science. So hopefully um, that, can, that can work. And we're really encouraging everyone is what the, is what paying the price. Unfortunately, it's very affordable, $200.
you'll be certified in all our courses. You have access to coaching. You have access to the market. It's, it's like as good as free. This $200 is so that you will not say that I didn't pay anything because of people, if not, it comes out of them. They won't take it seriously. And there, we are already having registrations. We have only 20 slots to the Subca Futurist program. Already, as of this morning, Stella, please confirm five or how many people so far? Five, yeah. So as of this morning, five people have registered to be trainees. It means that we have only 15 slots. We have not even launched, though. We're launching December 5th, a virtual online launch. We'll still talk about that in the course of the weeks. We'll be promoting that. So we're not even launched yet. We already have five payments. The cost starts January 10th. So if you are delaying, you're not likely to register your interests because by the time we sell out 20 slots, the person has to wait until June. You remember it's, it's a six months program. Once yeah. we start the program, the next cohort will be taken in June. Um, Precious, you are sending to me privately. Please send it on the public domain. So register your people on time. If not, they have to wait until June. Thank you so much. So I think we need to wrap up at this point. Um, unfortunately, Otman's network sent him out, but we need to release him. Onyebuchi has a question for Stella. Please ask your question. Okay, thank you very much. Good evening, everyone. Thank Good you for evening. the very interesting session. I have a question for Stella. All right. You mentioned earlier that um, your friends had been sending you some um, job openings and all of that. And I'm sure one or two must have been very dicey, but you rejected. So I want to thank know you. why. Why Sopka? What's why Sopka? Just, I just really want to know why, from not from the professional, because it's beyond professional or money now, based on what you said. So why Sopka? Correct. I want to um, know. Thank you, Bubu. So my reason, or one of my reasons, is I saw satisfaction and I saw future. Sopka gives me the kind of satisfaction that um, I didn't get in the, in the banking industry. I didn't get in the fashion industry. I didn't get in hospitality. I found myself being able to express, express my being. I'm able to help people, which is one thing I know that I do well. So Sopka gave me a platform. Sopka has given me a platform. So it, it doesn't, it's not about the money, because if it's the money, I know that I and Tunde wouldn't have stayed this long with Sopka. Yeah. So of course, I remember Tunde said yes. So Sopka gave me a platform to express me. And then of course, there is future in Sopka. I saw a future. My mother saw a future. Because before I left my former job, um, I had a conversation with her. And she said, okay, let me sleep over it. As much as she didn't know so much about Sopka, she said, I think there's a future there mm. and give it a try. So I left my job without thinking twice. I, I left my job and followed Sopka and I'm glad I did. Wow. If I could do it again, I'll do it again. Wow, wow. And I hope to become a co-owner of Sopka in the nearest future. Yes, so this is inspiring. Thank you so much for that question, Buchi, Bubu. And thanks for the revealing answer, um, Stella. Thank you so much to everyone that has allowed us to host you this weekend. Thanks to everyone that has joined from the first session till now. I particularly want to thank Grandma, Dr. Ngozi Odocha, um, FFO, Feintola Onogorua, um, Nkechi, Anedobe, and several others. Princess Udwak, all the way from Dubai, that has joined every single session. Purity Onashile, who joined every single session. Every one of you, Emmanuel Bauer, Dorothy Hirse, Wallanle Chris Ezomo, Josephine, um, Zeeb, 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 Morayo Ebo, our sponsor. Thank you so much, Morayo Salawu, you know, Nonye Chinweke, Nora Chun, Chukunweke, Onye Buchi Odianjo. Every one of you, Ralph Obafemi, and my team, thank you for standing with me all through this weekend. It's been a beautiful time spent well. 
All the replays have been shared and we're still going to share this last one. Thank you so much to everyone. Let me share one secret. So if you have noticed session after session, I have won a different top for each session. And each, each top has represented a particular business. These were unsolicited, but it's my way of giving back to the businesses or brands that I love and like. So per adventure, next time you see that we're hosting a program, a virtual program, a physical program, you probably want to send me a t-shirt and I could just wear it on your behalf. It could just be part of your branding strategies. It comes as a generous part of me giving back to your brand. So speak with my team. They can tell you my size. If you are able to afford a free t-shirt, it doesn't cost you anything for the visibility. I'm just putting it out here. No visa, no get clothes to wear. And I'm not begging you. I'm just saying I love to help and support you. So <laughs> it's true now. So that they don't say, this man is looking for clothes to wear. I have clothes to wear. So just putting it out here. Have a beautiful week. May God bless you. As we're starting this week, doors are opening to you. Peace is with you. You are in abundance. You are in great, great grace. And all things are working together for your good. And everything is working for you. Thank you so much. God bless you. And goodbye from us.